took it, Dane. I promise you. <laughs> we are back. <laughs> your host, Pastor P. It's your boy, Mike J. And it's Lily Dane. I'm so sick of Dane. This is uh, <laughs> part two of the night. The sequel continues. She's been like getting on my nerves the whole show. She's been burning it's, me. It's all right, though. Water is life. It's all right. It's you fine. She, she act like I was you know, draining that water behind you, me. You was. You, you don't even realize I mean? that was you really, went into a zone. I'm thirsty, for real. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So check this out. We got two special guests in the building tonight, man. It's a pleasure to have them. Uh, we got Lady Queen, yeah. and we got Rob E. Johnson. And we met Rob at Uncle Chris's event. Yes. And ever since we met Rob, man, he's just been keeping it 100 with us. He's been talking to us, listening to our music. I've been following your Facebook page, Rob, and you are doing some things, man. What's going on? Well, a whole lot of things is going on. You know, I don't know if I got enough fingers to count them, but. You know, we're working on a different, you know, we're, we're soul records. First of all, you know, I'm recording new artists on the label. Right. Uh, if you're familiar with soul records, it's a label that was started by Barry Gordy in 1964 as part of Motown. You know, he recorded Gladys Knight in the Pips, Junior Walker in the All-Stars. Matter of fact, Gladys Knight recorded Midnight Train to Georgia on soul records. Uh, she recorded, I uh, heard it through the grapevine on soul records. Uh, Shorty Long recorded Here Come the Judge on Soul Records. Mm. Junior Walker and All Stars recorded Shotgun and everything on Soul Records. Marvin Gaye was one of the writers for Soul Records. Soul Records is a historical label, and you, we got a saying that the soul never dies. And so, anyway, there's a great article in Hollywood right now, in the Hollywood 360, written by Cheryl Aronson, who also won the award for writing the Motown musical. But she has an article on the resurrection of soul records. So that's, that's part of what I speak about when I say soul records. And I have great artists, new artists signed with me, which, of course, Lady Queen here, who's a fantastic singer, hip-hop artist. She's also one of the stars in our television series that we're working on called Chase Street, which is the greatest political crime drama series of all time. When you get a chance to see it, you know, you, it's, it's, it's going to outdo Empire, Law and Order, and specifically Law and Order. Because he, he, he talking big. Yeah, look, he talking and big. I love his, I love I his love passion. It. Like he's smiling and through the it. whole I thing. It. I love this you know, energy. Yeah, I'm keeping it real. You know, matter of fact, I made you start a company for real, for real records. Oh. But, oh. but the the thing is, in the law and law and order part of Chase Street, every attorney is an actual top attorney in the state of New Jersey, and oh, I'm wow. fortunate enough to play the judge. The Lady right. Queen here, she does magic in the show. You got to see it. When the series come out, you'll see what we're talking about. This is this is Lady Queen, who's one of the greatest hip-hop artists ever lived. Okay. And actually. <laughs> <laughs> you know, let them know about you. Uh, how you doing? My name is Lady Queen. Um, I do music, acting. I also have a clothing line called LP's Clothing Company. You may follow it like that, LP's Clothing Company on Instagram. Um, yeah, I am on Chase Street. What I'm playing is the fortune teller. Like, you know, I have people coming up to me, you know, asking me to read their cards and stuff like that. So it's um, it's interesting. Um, you, you know, also when I speak about Chase Street, you know, Denny Brown from Camden, who was also in the State Basketball Hall of Fame, you know, he's the one that came up with Chase Street. He was the creator of it. And then uh, Thomas Friedman, who's one of the greatest writers that ever lived, he has three or four great top-selling books out. You know, one is called The Organization, Sons of Sin, Her Little Secret, and uh, Lucas Torres Story, quite a few books he has out. And then, of course, Nate Banks Sr. and Nate Banks Jr., who are executive producers with Chase Street. They, um, you know, as a matter of fact, little Nate's first guy took Will Smith to New York. You know, they um, started off with a lot of in the... Um, LL Cool J, Biggie Small, they were some of the artists that they worked with. And then, of course, we got Benny Mateo, who was um, getting ready to be award-winning actor at <laughs> Chase Street, you know, and uh, he's also an executive producer of it. And I've been around the business for a long time because, as a matter of fact, I was on the scene when um, Al Pacino did Dog Day Afternoon. You know, my friend uh, Dick Williams, who also played Pretty Tony in the Mac, a uh, real good friend of mine. He um, he was also in a play they did on Broadway called What the Wine Sellers Buy. He played in Dog Day Afternoon with Al Pacino. Sheesh. And, you know, I've been on the set of all the major films from back in the day because uh, 
I was on the set when they did Superfly. You know, I've seen some pictures of us. My One of my best friends, KC, that was his automobile that Ryan O'Neill drove in Superfly. Matter of fact, Sig Shaw's wife was getting on him for spending money trying to make Superfly. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but two of the dentists in Harlem, they came to the rescue and, um, you know, they helped fund it. So that turned out to be a super hit uh, film, you know, and uh, matter of fact, Ryan O'Neill and me, well, we were very close. And of course, I was on the set of Shaft, you know, I knew Richard Roundtree, we both used to model together. I'll find some old pictures and send them to you. You know, he, uh, he played um, Shaft, you know, in actuality, for people who don't really don't know it, you know, um, most of them films came from an idea of somebody, even the Mac. And when I speak about um, Shaft, you know, you know Moses Gunn played Bumpy in Shaft. You know, he, he, in, in, in actuality, you know, Bumpy Johnson had hired a guy to get his daughter Margaret back who had been kidnapped, so they made the story, you know, Shaft. You know, and, um, you know, guys probably know that, you know, Bumpy died July the 7th at Wells Restaurant with his real chauffeur, Junie Bird, you know. Um, you know, Bumpy, uh, he was an icon. They're making a thing right now called Harlem Godfather, uh, which the same guy that wrote Hoodlum, you know, he's one of the ones that's pending that. You know, if they want to get it right, they'll probably hit me up to, you know, be a consultant for it. Mm. So, we, you know, and also, you know, we've got another one we will be doing soon on Frank Matthews' story. And he's the real American gangster who went to Vietnam, went all in the Middle East, you know, created the Asian pipeline. You know, we got some great films coming. That's what's up. I don't know if Lady Queen want to give another spiel or not, you know, yeah, want to hog the mic. Yeah, what did you get interested <laughs> in? How long you been at it? Yeah, yeah, acting. Um, actually, not long. Like, um, about two years ago, I came out about two years ago, I, I was like doing just regular plays and all um, with Bethel in Philadelphia okay. at the Garage of Art, is it? Mm -hmm. And um, he actually came up to... To see one of the plays. He came up to see one of the plays <laughs> and he was like, I'm so shocked how it happened. He came, he was like, listen, I want you to come out in this show that I'm, that I'm, you know, I'm working on. And I'm just like, oh, okay. Basically, I didn't believe him <laughs> because, like, everybody's always like, "Oh yeah, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do that," and when you we get never there, it's like, yeah. do anything. And like, he hit me up like a week later, like, "Are you ready?" I'm like, "For what?" He was like, "Well, you have to read um, the script, and then you're gonna start filming for Chase Street." And I'm just like, "What? <laughs> Wait a minute, I'm not ready for this." He was like, "Oh, yo, you're ready because I seen you acting." So yeah, I got the script, I read it, and um, I just began filming. And, and we got a couple other films that she's working on too. One of them is a horror series that'll be coming out um, hopefully next year. Got yeah. some of the great guys that are working on that series too. And um, we're either with Mighty Works Media or, or Soul Records, she got a dynamic um, um, hip hop that she put together. Yeah, I'm working on, on an album. It's called Step Out. It's about girls stepping out and getting money. Um, and that, I came out with that because of my clothing line, it's called LQ Clothing Company, which is Lady Queen, and to me, we're all queens, so like, yeah, I like to support with women, and I'm tea woman all day, tea queen all day. How long have you been in music? How long have you been doing that? Um, music, actually, <laughs> I'm surprised of how things happen, like, I've never planned on doing anything, mm -hmm. um, what happened is, like, just people come up to me and be like, you have a great look to do this and that. And like, they pull me into the situation. So as far as the music, um, it's a single that I've been working on. Um, I haven't been throwing it out there because um, I don't know how to do it. <laughs> I'm like a little so nervous. I'm like, is it going to happen? I don't know. But um, it's been like about two years or three. Okay. Maybe. And um, I am finally got an album cover for it. And um, I'm going to throw some more things into it. I've um, met a lot of artists, mm -hmm. like well-known artists and stuff like that, state property and everything like that. Mm -hmm. And like, um, yeah, they're like motivating, you know, they're like really cool. Yeah. They're like motivating me to the music and stuff like that. You know, and uh, we'll either put it on Mighty Works Media or Soul Records. You know, <laughs> she's also signed with Erskine Entertainment, LLC, which is a, which is a corporation I got, which, you know, we um, distribute, sometimes promote different films. We have artists signed with us. Um, you know, she signed with Erskine Entertainment, Nicole Martin, who's also an actress, who's also on Chase Street, Lauren Marie, who's also an actress, she signed with Erskine Entertainment, 
Anita Calloway, a.k.a. Neva Vives, who was in Fight Valley and, and uh, quite a few other films. She's also in Chase Street. She signed with Erskine Entertainment. Justin Moore, uh, who's an actor out of Philadelphia, he's also with Erskine Entertainment. And Ken Gardner's with Erskine Entertainment, you know. You know, we make things happen. This Matter of fact, this is not when Chase Street that's coming out. It's like very surprising. We have like, um, what, uh, we have some great kid. records. Yeah, we, we have. Kid. Yeah, we have yeah, like Jada definitely. Kid, is it? No, we, we have, have Gilly the Kid. He's in Chase Street. Mm -hmm. um, Terrell Hicks is in it. You know, Vincent Pastore from The Sopranos is in it. Clifton Powell is in it. You know, it's quite a few stars is oh in it. God, yeah. You know, it's because it's so well put together. And, um, you know, and, and like I say, all the attorneys are great actors and they're all actual attorneys. So when it comes to the law, Chase Street has the law down pat, you know. You know, I'm, I'm, matter of fact, I'm a member of the Bar Association too. Here's my pen. <laughs> so, you know, everybody, and I'm fortunate, I'm associate producer, but I play a judge. So, you know, and matter of fact, Shorty Long's hit record, Here Come the Judge, was on Soul Records. Oh, this was mm -hmm. nice. So when he says that it's not enough fingers to count, you can already hear it's just not enough fingers to count everything that they have going on. It's got a lot going on, but the, the 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 energy that he has, like our generation can definitely learn something from you. Just the smile to see when you talk about these things, the passion that mm -hmm. you have. Our generation can definitely learn something of having passion and doing what you so definitely don't be nervous. Don't be nervous. Oh, I haven't so heard any of your music, but don't don't be nervous. Don't be nervous. <laughs> <laughs> Just go on out there and know, get what's for you. But you know what's gonna happen and yeah. like feeling it like oh my God, mm -hmm. I'm about to paint right now. <laughs> 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 but it's, a, it's definitely been a blessing because you know what? It's like a lot of people be promising you stuff. Yeah. Oh, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do that. But actually he came upon me. I mean you know he came to the yeah. play. Really gave me the hookup like all day. Like it's a lot of things going on. Yeah, see, because I, I, I figured that she'd get nominated for a Grammy or Oscar, you know, yeah. you know, like a lot of other people <laughs> that, that I know will get nominated. I think Chase Street going to have a whole bunch of nominees when it's all over with, you That's know, because uh, that thing is well put together. I got some other things I'm working on, too, you know, uh, Western, which is about Jim Beckworth, who is the first African-American U.S. Marshal. Because, um, uh, you know, because I heard... Um, one of you guys say something about somebody that had invented something um, that was black. Well, sometimes that happens because, you know, the original Lone Ranger is Bass Reeves. You know, he's right. a black guy who, who they call the Lone Ranger, had the most arrests in U.S. history. Oh, he, I didn't know that. He even arrested his own son for murdering his, his wife, you know. Wow. So, I yeah, Bass Reeves. He just <laughs> named a bridge after him not too long ago. So when they made the radio show called The Lone Ranger, um, you know, they got all of it from Bass Reeves. But what they did was then when it became a TV show, they got a, you know, white mm -hmm. guy to play the Lone Ranger and Tonto. And, right. and, and the whole, all the generations went by. They didn't even have no idea that Bass Reeves was actually the Lone Ranger. Wow. You know, one time, you know, I was reading where <laughs> he arrested 18 <laughs> guys by himself. <laughs> so, yeah, wow. they just went ahead and decided to turn, turn themselves in and let him take them to jail. You know, he was, uh, yeah, it's, a, it's a lot of things, you know, in our, in, in, in our film, when we're doing the Western, we're going to film, also, you know, Wild Bill Hickok, as you know, he got killed in, in um, Deadwood by Jack McCall, who shot him in the back, and I already done did the soundtrack for, um, one of the soundtracks for Deadwood, you know, I wrote that myself, I don't know who's going to do it. Called Deadwood is a mining town without laws, too many to mention. Gunslingers and dance hall swingers, just to pay your attention. <laughs> Deadwood Dick and Rawhide Rick, outlaws Frank and Jesse James. <laughs> Billy the Kid, who knows what he did? I can't recall all the names. Mm. Cowboys riding the plains all through the night, coming into town looking for the showdown and the good old fight. Oh, oh, that's what he gave us a little sneak yeah. peek, guys. Yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah, I got yeah. I got, when he said he wrote it, he meant it. Yeah, yeah no <laughs> doubt about it. <laughs> Spit it for you. Yeah, yeah, no that's doubt about it. That you know, I got a um, couple things. You know, even even for the um, for the, the the new movie when we do it on uh, Frank Matthews. You know, remember all them guys in that circle dealt with Attica, Rikers, Sing Sing, and all them areas. So, you know, when when he got charged, he got charged illegally. So I guess you guys know what modus operandi is, right? That's an MO. Mm -hmm. That's um, what people 
techniques or people's habits or what people do, do you know, you draw a MO by them. And what I mean by that, you might see a guy on the street and he's a drug dealer, so you know that's his MO mm -hmm. when you okay. see him. So he gets locked up. Somebody say, oh, well, he always throws drugs in the alley. That's his MO. Well, he's yeah. a drug dealer and that's what he does. So and for people who know that, when I pen some of the stuff uh, for for uh, Frank Matthews, you know, it's like when he gets out, uh, well, you know, he used to call him the Mac. So he said, I'm the Mac and I'm back in town getting ready to put my girls down. Anybody <laughs> in my way, I ain't going to hesitate to slack. Because you know, I had just gotten back from doing time for a crime you know I didn't commit. But it ain't no thing because Elmira, Attica, and Rikers and Sing Sing got brothers doing time for crime. Their modus operandi just didn't fit. So that means they're charging with yeah. something that normally this is not what he does. You know, like when Bumpy went to Alcatraz, Bumpy never sold drugs. Any book that you read or any story that you heard about Bumpy Johnson selling drugs in Harlem is a lie. Lies, you know, guys, lies. Bumpy, Bumpy got framed by a, a guy named Wallace. He, he said that he was selling drugs for Bumpy because the FBI wanted to get Bumpy out of the area. But Bumpy, even Nicky Bones, one time he got picked up for selling drugs. Police let him go because they was on Bumpy's payroll. And he said he was afraid that they was going to tell Bumpy he was bringing drugs in Harlem. There was no addicts like that in Harlem back when Bumpy was there. When Bumpy died, then Frank Matthews took over the drug empire. And they started having habits everywhere, addicts everywhere. But mm -hmm. Bumpy sent guys to school. If you read Mamma Amir Baraka's book, it'll tell you, he'll tell you how Bumpy approached him in the Red Rooster in Harlem and put up a theater group. When we was like 10 years, no, we was, no, I was about 14. We used to go to Bumpy, he had put up a theater group up for Mamma Amir Baraka in Newark. And we used to go there every Saturday and do like a little theater thing. Nice. So, yeah, so. You know, he, he's a fantastic guy. Sent a lot of guys to school to become lawyers and doctors. Nice. Sheesh. That's he just came in here and dropped. Look, Joe's right? Everything. I just want to sit down and talk to him. Like, just, just <laughs> boom. Right? right. You know. Goodness gracious. Just want to sit down and talk and say, yeah. just listen to all these stories. I'm like, this was. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a lot of them. You know, I started a nonprofit thing with a guy named Jerry Farmer called the Turnaround. Jerry Farmer's from Camden. Uh, New Jersey. Matter of fact, he has a book. He just passed away a few years ago, but he received the Martin Luther King Medal of Honor. Uh, he has a book he's written called The Turnaround. Mm. And, you know, he talks how he turned his life around. You know, he was robbing banks, pubs, stores, shooting people. He was doing it all. And one day he was getting ready to rob a bank on Broadway. This is when Camden had no empty buildings. And this was in the 60s. And some guy at a beauty shop called him and said, come here, I got something for you. And he walked over and he gave him a Bible. <laughs> he said, <laughs> when he opened the Bible, he saw something about not stealing, robbing. And he got paranoid. He said, wait a minute, I think I ain't supposed to do this. And that was the beginning of his turnaround. Wow. You know, and he, and he became a mentor after that. Um, you know, people that was on ISP and parole started getting sent to him. He was a fantastic guy. And that's how it started, just like that. Yeah. My God. Yeah. But I want to get back to Shy over here. Lady oh, Queen. Yeah, yeah. Lady Queen. Yeah. Lady Queen. What's yeah. next yeah. for you? What's next for you? What's are you next? working on anything else? But are the horror thing. What's what's going on with that? What role do you play in the, the horror? Well, she Can you talk about it or no? Not yet. We're not allowed to talk okay, about okay. it. Okay, okay. Let's leave that alone. That's okay. coming out next year though. Yeah, hopefully. So hopefully. hopefully. All right, so what else are you working on yeah. besides that that you can um, can talk about? Okay. Because I understand. Do is I, like I said, I have a clothing line. I do fashion shows every year. Where's your clothing line? Is it? Um, I haven't I'll, had I haven't had it on web yet because okay. I'm trying to find somebody that could actually do the web thing. So what I do is I do it on Instagram. Okay. Or I go to venues and I do um you know I sell it at venues and stuff like that. It's Lady and Queen on Instagram. It's LQ. It's LQ. LQ that's that's LQ. I have, um, this is perfect. I'll give mm -hmm. it to you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Like that. Um, I also do um party promotions. So oh. I'm having a, a zodiac that I, every year. Well, at the end of the zodiac sign, I have a big birthday bash for everyone. Okay. So I get artists to come out and stuff like that. My one that's coming up is April 17th in Philadelphia in Sable Show Bar. Okay. It's a gentleman's club place. Oh, all right. But like, I don't discriminate. I do parties everywhere. It's fine. It's fine. So um, yeah, we're gonna do one in Chesapeake in May. 
and we're gonna have comedians and stuff like that as okay. well. Okay. When in May, my birthday's in May. When in May? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm waiting for them to give me the okay. Um, May twenty first. Mm-hmm. Look, my birthday's me. Look. Um, Turn up on a Tuesday. And what else? Black, I'm, I'm, I'm coming. I'm drilling. Cause I gotta get something else out of you. I do like. <laughs> Come on, shy. I bartend. I do a lot of. It's Look at you. You a grinder, huh? Yeah, you like, bartending. I do a lot of stuff. I just. Um, Where do you bartend? I do. Um, I do videos. I do modeling. I'm a taxi model as well. I have mad tattoos. I have like eleven tattoos. Okay. And um. Yeah, just a lot of stuff that I do. You give me a spit if you want. Yeah, you that shy? Look, I was going to ask. Instagram, and I don't like, let me show the world who I am. Lady, got the boys going crazy. Got my phone going off. Pop them on. Just want to pay me. I was about to hit the beat box. Let's rock out. I try to keep it as clean as possible, but you know what? Nowadays, you got to go hardcore, so that's what I'm working on. That's like I'm debating on. You don't have to. I mean, if that's the boat, you know, like, you uh, can't sell no records you without it. it. I understand. Yeah, get in where you fit in. Right. You have to. You just have get to. Get in where you fit in. You have to. That's a shame that we have to do that yeah. just to sell a record. Yeah. Because that's what we was talking about before y'all actually came out. Something where we were saying, like, you know, everybody feels like you got to talk about dope and this, that, and the third just to sell a record. And it, I mean, at the end of the day, it's selling the record. Is I guess it's business. You got to make that money. So, yeah, you know, look, but you don't have to, that's not, and here's the thing, half the artist that's saying is not doing it, so definitely you got to definitely say kids smarten up. I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah. You know what? Um, people have to know, it's called entertainment. That's we're right. We're entertaining. That's right. Talk to them. Everyone. You Talk know to them. Because we rap about it doesn't mean we're doing it. We're just entertaining you. That's exactly. It. Like, okay, we're talking about gun stuff. It doesn't mean literally pick up a gun and stuff like that. It's entertainment. You, we hyping you up. Like, don't literally pick up a gun and touch you in. <laughs> And, and, and that's where I feel where, you know, um, parents come in as well. Like, it, because it's, it's hard. It's hard to, to shelter your kids from the music. But that's where you step in and just let them know it's just entertainment. Take it for what it is. Exactly. Just like TV. Just take it for what it is. It's not, they're not, you know, a lot of people are not out here, like you said, just picking up a gun out here, just doing all of this. It's just right. pure entertainment. Yes, sir. Um, that's it. No way to bone. <laughs> you know, some, sometimes, though, sometimes it'd be a message, but I think the new generation, you know, don't get the message. You know, I, I know Pastor here, he got some good messages and his stuff, but, you know, Kenny Gamble and uh, Leon Huff, which is another trademark I got now, TSOP, the sound of Philadelphia. You know, th- these two particular guys, Leon Huff and Kenny Gamble, you know, they had 3,000 hit records. Mm-hmm. You know, 3,000 hit records. You know, Cam, the guy in Philly, guy got together and formed Philadelphia National Records. Mm-hmm. Now, Kenny Gamble said on all his stuff, he's always said there's a message in the music. See, the TSOP, the sound of Philadelphia, always had a message in the music. Something that I'm working on also would be Motown versus the sound of Philadelphia. And when I say that, you know, people say, well, how are you going to do that? You know, who's who? Well, you know, Motown has uh, the Temptations, the sound of Philadelphia got the OJs. Mm-hmm. You know, Motown got Marvin Gaye, and the sound of Philadelphia got Philly Teddy Pendergrass. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, um, the sound of Philadelphia got Patti LaBelle, and Motown got uh, Gladys Knight. So, you know, I think this is going to be really something really that I'm putting together that's going to really work out. You know, uh, you know, with um, them, you know, against each other. Other people mm-hmm. may want to do it too. You know, because the sound of Philadelphia had so many hit records, you know. I remember when Billy Paul, uh, Carrie Gilbert wrote me and Mrs. Jones, and I don't even think Billy wanted to sing it at first, you know, wind up getting him a Grammy for it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. no Jones. doubt about it, no doubt I mean, about it. And that's crazy, I met him, he was living in an apartment complex out in Jersey. It's different. And, and, and we're here, uh, uh, in Blackwood No, area. Blackwood, yeah, yeah. I met yeah. him right in Blackwood at his, they was like, come down here and talk to this guy. I was like, who is he? Come in his house, he's like, I'm getting ready to do this song with salt and pepper. I was like, who is this dude? <laughs> <laughs> in apartment complex, somebody going to do a song with salt and pepper. And then, you know, his wife came out like, his name is Billy. Blanche. Yeah, yeah Blanche. I was like, who is this dude? And I didn't know who he was, but he was sitting right there. Underneath me, I lived upstairs. Mm-hmm. Oh, really? This dude was downstairs. I never knew who he was. Wow. Come to find out, Billy Paul. I'm sitting in his house. He talk about he would take me to meet somebody. It was a Beatle or something like one of the guys from the, uh, the Beatles. Uh, no, Paul Paul McCartney. 
Yeah, he's from he was, the he was like, he was like, I'm gonna take you to meet Paul McCartney. At the time, I'm young. I'm like, who is a Paul McCartney? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what he talking about. I'm like, I don't know this dude. He's selling me hood dreams. He ain't on. Da, 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 da. Next thing you know, he brought me in. Like, I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna take you to meet some people. I'm like, he right. really was serious. He introduced me to people. Like, like he really knew Salt and Pepper. I was like, he really know him. Salt and Pepper's here. Salt, salt, salt. I'm like, he knows Salt. Oh, he really knew him. So I let him get up. Yeah, Tina Riley, who also I have on Soul Records, she was Billy Paul's backup wow. singer. They used to travel all over, the, all over the world. He married Blanche, who lived up the street from me on Kenwood Avenue wow. in Parkside in Camden. Yeah, <laughs> Billy Paul, he had a record out called um, Going East, Ebony Woman. Mm. You know, he had many records out, Live at the Cadillac Club. And he, um, when he did Me and Mrs. Jones, that's when he got a Grammy for that one. Right. And that was part of Philly International Records, you know, the Gamma Huff, um, Mighty Works Media. Mighty Works Media is my company. I mean, <laughs> the Mighty <laughs> Three Music Company is Leon Huff, Kenny Gamble, and Tom Bell. Oh, wow. Yeah, they were great writers. You know, they wrote a lot of hits. Matter of fact, McFadden and Whitehead was working in the, um, the, the, the mail room, and they came up talking about People were stabbing everybody in the back. And then Leon Huffman was talking about Joe. And he, he may not remember this if he listened to me, but he, he said it. He said uh, Joe was a backstabber. He said, what's Rubber Band Band? I know they're real good friends. I know they best of friends. You know, they both great writers. Rubber Band Band was a hit. And backstabbing, what they doing? Smiling in your face all the time. They trying to take your oh, place. that's what I saw. <laughs> yeah. okay. You know, I ain't no doubt about it. Now yeah. that song I know. You know, <laughs> Car you know, Car Carrie Gilbert, you know, they call we call him hippie. He's always be in the gym. You know, I used to box pro too, you know, I fought Angel De Leon um at the Tropicana to a draw, in case anybody didn't know that. <laughs> she did all around. Yo, all around. She all, right. all across the board. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that was that was cause Joe Frazier's fighter got sick. And I was at the fight, and I always could box. You know, Chris Collins, the pastor that I know, know all you guys. He knew me a little bit. Yeah. Not, not a little bit, know me a lot. Bit. <laughs> He's a great man, one of the greatest men in the world. But anyway, um, Joe Frazier's son got sick, and you know my middle name is Erskine. So they said, uh, Erskine can box. You know, he said, you ain't in shape to fight this guy. I said, you know, they paid me, so I went and changed. <laughs> I went, I went, hey, me, so I'm ready. I went I'm and ready, changed bro. and got in the ring. And this is a true story. You know, he knocked me down the first round, right? <laughs> but I got up and took care of things after that. But, <laughs> but there was a guy named Ricky Whitey from Camden. I'll never forget this. When I got knocked down, all of a sudden he jumped in the ring. He lived a couple of doors from where Chris grew up at. He jumped in the ring and was hollering, get up, get up. <laughs> and so later on I asked him, I said, what made you um, jump in the ring and do that? He said, man, I, said, I bet everything I had on you. <laughs> 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 it's like I had to make sure you was getting up. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't care about you getting knocked down or nothing. My money on the line. Get up. He said, oh, man. He said, every, he said everybody back there was betting on the other guy. I bet everything on you. <laughs> That's a shame. You know. You to that make me broke. Me. <laughs> so it, it turned out to be a draw. But yeah, I knew, um, you know, Diane King and them, them guys. I used to go and me and Gavin Cook. He's a playwright and he's a boxer from Camden, was a judge and attorney. Me and him used to go in the Raw where every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, we were James Scott's sparring partner. James Scott was an undefeated light heavyweight fighter back in the 70s. They didn't give him the, the, the um, title because he had a life sentence. Mm. But anyway, Mariah Muhammad and Akbar Prey, who's everybody probably is familiar with him because he's in prison at the time, but they were the promoters. And we used to go into the prison. And then uh, when I was in law school up in Newark at Seton Hall, um, James Scott's daughter was in one of my classes. And she um, might have been one of the instrumental ones to help get him out of prison. Because, you know, he's been out now, but, you know, he's in his 70s, you know. But he was a great fighter. He beat Eddie Mustafa, uh, but they wouldn't give him the title. Now, Camden... Um, we have a gym in North Camden. We got one in Centerville, and Camden's always had great fighters. Camden, New Jersey. You know, a lot of people don't know it, but 
Um, Philadelphia one time had all the top 10 Middle Easters from Philadelphia, but most of them trained in Camden. When Muhammad Ali, I'll never forget this, Muhammad Ali moved to Cherry Hill. He came to Camden and boxing a guy named Preston Donaldson. You know, Preston hit hard as a Mack truck because I boxed him before, too. <laughs> <laughs> like, I felt one of them hits. I, I know he did. <laughs> oh, do it. You ain't joking. And, and, and Angelo Dundee, Ali's trainer, said, okay, Preston, if you know if Ali get hurt, I can't pay you. <laughs> so that's how great a fighter he was. Wow. You wow. know, and, um, you know, we had um, a guy named Ernest Twine who fought in the Nationals. He had one loss against uh, Ernest Twine had one loss against um, Tommy Hearns. Yeah, right. that was the only loss he had. And um, Camden definitely had great fighters. Jersey Joe Walcott, which is Arnold Cream, he was from Camden. You know, he was the oldest heavyweight champ at one time. He was 37 when he first got the title. You know, he became the sheriff of Camden. I don't mm -hmm. know if you guys knew that or not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a fellow named Robert Robbins, who I grew up with in Camden, he the one that brought the gambling to the state of New Jersey. It was his idea. He wrote the bill and everything out for it. Oh, wow. Yeah. Sheesh. That, I'm and, from and North that's, Jersey. Yeah, that's, oh, from, you from much. where? North Jersey. <laughs> yeah, what part? Patterson. Oh, yeah, that's where they used to have great fighters at. <laughs> you know, the only time, true, true story, the only time fighters from Patterson ever lost was against somebody in Camden. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you know what? Put that out there. Right. You know, <laughs> just the yeah, you know, know, let me just let y'all know. Now, you know, Joey Giardello, he trained in Camden. He's actually from South Philly. Oh, and, you know, you know, him and Hurricane Carter, who was from Patterson, mm -hmm. oh, they yeah, fought. Mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, Hurricane, I mean, they say that Hurricane won, but, you know, Joey Giardello won the fight. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so... <laughs> and, 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 and like what the school costs. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and, and Gerald Farmer, the one that got the book, the turnaround, he has all of them in this book. You know, Hurricane Carter's mm -hmm. in the book. Yeah. You know? Wow. This is uh, an interesting uh, man. That was, uh, he, he's he's just, an interesting got, guy. You were, you were greatness. Yeah. Huh? And, and it looked like he got you covered, too. Oh, you yeah. know what I mean? You was the first person he brought up as soon as I said, come to the show, bring somebody. He, he's he grabbing Lady, Lady Queen. I said, all right. All right. <laughs> All right. Whatever, whoever he say, we're going to bring in. Straight like that. Yeah, they, they, they got, she got the right name, Lady Queen. <laughs> it's about time. So, so Lady Queen, got, are you looking to get um people like Gilly the Kid and them on your album? You looking to get some of them um, cats on your album? What's yeah, going on? I know you out there grinding. I can't you you grinding? <laughs> <laughs> She's like, Look, I, can't I like talk. to pull it out. Like, She's like, like, I, yeah, I want to know, uh, about when, when's your album going to come out? Um... Do you know? Got a date at all? Not a date at all. No, but you coming, right? Yep. It's just, you know why? It's a lot of, I'm working it's anticipation. It's, it's just, oh my God, it's overwhelming. I'm doing so much. It's just like, I can't put a date to nothing. Just tune in. That's all I got to say. I got the clothing line coming out. I have like, you know, I have clothes I'm working with. I have acting I'm working with. I have music that I'm working with. Plus I'm putting other artists. I'm doing like promotions and stuff like that to put other artists on. Like it's just a lot. So. What's your social media plug so we can stay tuned? Um, with my it. main plug is L Lady Queen 224. My clothing line is LQ Clothing Company. And my Facebook is Philly Queen. Okay. Philly Queen on Facebook. Is that a follow page or a friend page? It's a friend page because I don't know how to do that networking stuff. I have to find someone that could really... I did have a secretary that was... Um, Getting everything situated, she ended up um, grabbing the uh, obviously, you know, she was getting money, and she went to Puerto Rico for like a whole month. And by the time she came back, everything was like chaos. chaos so it's just like it didn't work out at the end of the day. So I'm just look, looking for someone to help me out with that. You heard that? Heard that? Anybody that needs? So any, any yeah, anyone that knows how to do websites or anybody that knows how to do the social media stuff and work it for me, um, I want to. You know, I, I, I get. Um yeah, I don't know if you know guys know Albert Small. He's the one that did the Soul Records website. You know, put her in touch with him. You know, yeah, and then yeah, Lauren yeah, Marie, already, Lauren Lauren Marie, I got you, I got you. who's also a sign with Erskine Entertainment. That's what she does too. Oh, uh, and by the way, yeah. I'm always looking for models too. So if y'all, you know, know any models, let me know. Okay. We, de me. we definitely got. Uh, what is it? Um, just females, right? No, for males as well. It's okay. um, LQ Clothing Company is Lady Queen for her and Luxury Class for him. Oh, oh I like that. Nice. Luxury yep. Class. And she has a nice little um, fashion show over at the uh, 
Well, you can mark me. In. It was my second year. Right after the year, I've been working on it for like my first time. Yeah, right. So it's still burning for me. Mm hmm. So. It's a lot of work. Well, I'm excited time. for you. I'm just meeting you, but I'm excited for you. Definitely Thank keep you. going and keep keep grinding. I, yeah. I like your hustle. You know, you know, she's also in the studio with Ricky Style. I'm also going to write a book, and I want to turn it into a film. But that's a little, that's <laughs> awesome. That's right. what I'm saying. I got a lot of good boy. I'm Yeah, we, 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 I don't know if you guys know Rob Federici. We was in his studio, and uh, Ricky got some stuff he wanted to uh, he would do with her on the label. You know, Ricky, the one that wrote Drew Zach's music for the Shimmy Twist, which you see Michelle Obama and them do it on Jimmy Fallon's show. And I got Ken Willis. He's also on Soul Records. He's in Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, him and uh, George Benson just did some stuff together. He was part of the Marquesians from Detroit. And a, and a fellow by the name of James Anderson, he's got a new record out right now that we just put up on Soul Records, which is called uh, Unconditional Love. And Don Thompson, who is one of the writers and the producer, if you're probably on my Facebook page or my website, you'll see a picture of the two of them with their soul shirts on up in front of the Motown recording studio uh, in Detroit. And, and Don Thompson is also the protege under a guy named Earl Van Dyke. Earl Van Dyke is a guy who has a group that he started back in the 60s called Earl Van Dyke and the Motown Brass. They became the funk brothers that backed up every song that Motown ever recorded. That was the studio band, whether it was The Temptations, Smokey Robinson, The Miracles, Gladys Knight, all of them, they backed up everybody's music. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody that performed or sang at Motown, they were the recording band. And Earl Van Dyke only recorded song of his own, and the ones that he recorded himself, he recorded on soul records. Yeah, no doubt about so, it. So y'all see where we at right now. So what's your uh, social media outlet links? Just Well, one is um, the Soul Records, LLC.com, and you know, then I have my Robert E. Johnson Facebook. I used to have one with Robert Erskine Johnson because that's my middle name. Well, you Everybody know Robert E. Johnson, that's, that's full. You can't even friend yeah. you on that. You know, oh yeah, why well, get another one? Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard to even. Yeah. You gonna have to follow him on. You got an Instagram? Yeah, so, on the Ersky E R S K Y. Oh, right, because that's how you have to follow him. That's how many yeah. followers he got on his page. Right. And your page is yeah. always lit, man. I'll be looking yeah. at your page like, God, did this man sleep? <laughs> yeah, that's what everybody asked me. We was at the Grammys last year, and, and I was at Time Out before I went back to the Grammys. And somebody said, I thought I just saw you at Time Out and, and, and had nights somewhere. <laughs> you might have, might could. He might have told me. You know, I was there. Well, it, was, it was always and, a pleasure, man. You know, show. and we talk about Robert Johnson. I don't know if you guys are familiar with the blues, Robert Johnson, the blues singer. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, well, you know, he's the father of the blues. And, you know, I know a million people have made films on him, but you know, he ain't no relation to me. But, you know, some guy just popped up a few years ago and said that he was his son. And the judge said, well, since nobody was disputing it, they gave him his royalties, which was a few million dollars. Wow. <laughs> yeah, tell me about it. And he died. When he died, he had, you know, before he even got wealthy. Um, you know, but there's a thing called the crossroads. You know, you guys may read about this. You know, the guy, Robert Johnson, was uh, from down south. He couldn't play, couldn't sing, and he left, and they claimed he met the devil at the crossroads. He came back a few months later, dressed all sharp, could play the guitar real good and sing. So he became known as the father of the blues. When you get a chance, uh, check it out. I mean, Robert Johnson, father of the blues. Mm. That's crazy. That's crazy. All right. Mm. Well, we had a great show. <laughs> I, I, I'm a, yeah. It's crazy when somebody could come in here like he just did and basically just control the microphone right. the whole 30 minutes with no problems. Right. You know what I'm saying? We ain't really have to ask no right. questions. Right. Like that. Right. You was really nervous. Like, I am. I'm what? so nervous to this day. And then if you see me barking at the club and stuff like that, you will never see me like this. You'll be like this. 
that wasn't the same girl I we just met. Like, no. so, so, what you only nervous when the lights, camera, action? Or? I don't know. <laughs> like, the play thing, too, I was nervous, but I, I like nailed it. Like, I don't know. It's just. Yeah, and she only be nailed. That's all right, because it's not going to be your friend. It hasn't even been a year. But you know what? Keep that humility. Yeah. Because that's really all it is. Yeah, yeah really. with this light thing, it not even been a year she yet. Doing a good so. job it hasn't been a year. She don't act nervous. No. You know, she didn't see So, how'd you get into your first play? Um, my friend Daryl introduced me to, um, actually, you know what, I, I work for a nursing agency, nursing assistant, I met this actor named Daryl, and he was, like, watching me the whole time I was working, and I'm like, is he a creep or what? Like, <laughs> so, and then, like, we started having a conversation and stuff like that, and then, I'm, and then, like, my music came up, and then he was like, I knew it. He was like, you're one of us. And I'm like, what are you talking about? He was like, well, you know, I do acting, and then I want you to come on this play. He just gave me the whole rundown. Next thing you know, I was in the play. <laughs> Action. So people like, pushing you. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah, it's just pushing me. People it's, pushing you to get there. Listen, I know it's in me because they run through my, it's like, it goes, my mom was like the best dancer in salsa. My dad played, was the good, the best bass player in Philly, like, you know what I mean? My uncles, they were all playing in bands and stuff like that. And it's just like, my mom was like, they never made it, so they never thought I was gonna make it, so they always wanted me to push push me to go into good schools, mm-hmm. you know, getting educated and all that stuff. And like, you know, now that I'm free, now that I'm free, I'm just <laughs> doing I'm free. me. How about that? And yes, free. you are. <laughs> free, free, free. free at last, I'ma do me. She did a phenomenal job at the play because I went to see the play. She was a great actress. And it was the day of my birthday. Wow. That's yeah. 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 so yeah. 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 Chase Street until yeah. a lot more, Yo. right? Salute. Salute, yeah. yeah. soldier. It hasn't been, it has been two years. <laughs> and, 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 it has been time flies. Yo, time flies. Oh my God. Time flies when you have fun. Not, but it's all long, great, long, though. Long, long it's long. all great. There we go. You know, yeah. great, so, great. So hopefully we can get you. It's too much too fast. So within a year's a year time from now, we want to get you back in yes. here to see where your progress went at. Uh, Definitely. Play your song. We need some rotation. Yeah. We're we're gonna gonna get your song to rotation. Maybe I can come to my next fashion show, hey? Yeah, yes, know, definitely. Like definitely. Come out host events. Yeah. You oh, know, bring the that? cameras out oh. and the mics and everything. And we, we do red carpet. Oh, yeah, we do the red carpet. Yeah. Red carpet yeah. Yeah. Yo, yes. So yeah. Make sure. You got network. All you got to do is call us. I'll make it happen right there. Yeah, we working with that. SNJ, we come out there, bring the mic and everything and make it work. That's love. So, right? That's yes, what we definitely. Like to do. I think definitely. Everybody should definitely. be helping each other. Yeah. That's what, yeah, that's what yeah, this yeah, is. Definitely. This is a platform to help, and we help, and you help, and we keep Listen, moving. Listen, right? yeah, it's, it's um, teamwork makes the dream work, and it, that mm-hmm. does exist. There's no such thing as only you. Nope. Yeah, yeah get out of it. And that. it's enough money for all of us get out here. Exactly. It's, exactly. Enough, it's enough for everybody out here. Yep. Well, this has been a great show, yes. man. This is the voice of reason. I'm your boy, Pastor P. It's your boy, Mike J. And it's Lily Dane. Yeah, and we have Lady Queen in the building and yes. my man Robert E. Johnson. Soul Records, and me and him going to talk after I leave here because I'm probably going to drop something on they leave, which... You know that's going to happen. And y'all might, right. y'all might, stay stay, stay, stay tuned. Stay tuned. And you guys might see me at a little coffee table in, in Chase Street as an extra. No. <laughs> <laughs> Drop in the clues. I'll be in the corners. Pouring coffee. Right? You never know. Yeah, yeah. That's how you start. Yeah.